Hi, this is James Sondrager here at Juniper Networks Education Services. Are you familiar with our learning pads? We offer 14 different pads covering the Junos OS and specific Juniper technologies. Each path shows the courses we offer and the relevant certifications in the order we suggest to maximize your learning. Just visit www.juniper.net slash learning pads to get started. When you click on a track, you'll see all the courses in that track and the associated certifications. You can click each course or certification to view more details. If you follow a learning path, you'll get the most from your training with Juniper Networks. Now, let's get to your Learning Byte. Welcome to Juniper Networks Learning Byte. My name is Mara Finos and I'm an Lab Architect with Education Services within Juniper Networks. In this Learning Byte, I'll be talking about how to automate network change verification using JSNAP. So JSNAP stands for Juno Snapshot Administrator. It's an automation tool that allows you to capture an audit runtime environment snapshot of network devices running Juno's OS. You can audit devices runtime against predefined criteria. JSNAP can be used to automate network change verification. Uh, for example, you can use JSNAP to take a snapshot of a device before a change and after a change. And then once the change is complete, you can compare both snapshots using the same JSNAP tool and then uh, verify what's changed and if there's any issue you can uh, resolve them before uh, the change goes live. Okay, so it's pretty handy and it can save a lot of time rather than going through a lot of devices, uh, you know, uh, looking at different configuration sections manually than just automating it to JSNAP. No, it makes sense. So, uh, prerequisites and reference for JSNAP. To get started with JSNAP, you need to have a basic understanding of Juno's operational command output in XML format. Uh, you need to have some familiarity with the XPath expressions. There are plenty of resources online available that you can use to learn more about XPath. Just search Google and you'll find plenty. Okay. Next, uh, JSNAP needs to be installed on a remote server, which has access to all the devices that you'll be testing against. You can check the JSNAP install instruction site here uh, and to learn more about how to install JSNAP on a machine. You can learn more about JSNAP by going to our Juniper Networks Day 1 book site uh, as, as shown here. And there's a pretty good uh, JSNAP Day 1 book that you can uh, read and learn more about. Uh, and it's really uh, will give you a lot of power. Okay, so. Uh, I'm just going to be uh, showing a demonstration of JSNAP uh, and, and talk about a little basics of JSNAP. Uh, and it, the, what I'm going to be showing is basically a very small portion of what JSNAP can do. Okay, there are a lot of configuration options uh, that you can use to make use of JSNAP. So I'm just going to be logging uh, into my JSNAP server. I'm already logged in actually. And so this is a uh, Linux VM that has JSNAP installed. And to do that, to see if JSNAP is installed, you can just do JSNAP version here to check the version here i can run this command and to learn more about jsnap commands you can do help okay it gives you a lot of information about jsnap so jsnap takes uh, to take a snapshot of a device you can pass you know that to snap and the name of the snapshot and then uh, you know uh, login of the device uh, and the password you can pass that or you can if you don't pa uh, pass dash p you'll ask for the password and then dash t basically the target device that will be uh, you know testing against, and then s is you can also uh, you know uh, target a specific section of the configuration, just a configuration which I'll show you later. Okay, to take a snapshot, and then once you take a snapshot, you can basically uh, check the snapshot. Uh, it's basically very self-explanatory here, as you see here. It gives talks you about all these options here. So I'm just gonna show you uh, in use. Okay, so I'm gonna be running. Uh, this following commands here on a EX4200 switch on my network. I'm going to be taking a pre snapshot and a post snapshot um, on the same device. Pre snapshot will be before I make any change to the device, and post snapshot will be basically after I make some changes and, and, and take the snapshot. And then I'll, I'll basically compare those two uh, snapshot and then and see if, if it passes or fails the test. Okay. So it's kind of a replicate uh, or simulate a production environment where you will be basically uh, doing this kind of task on a production device before any change control, okay? 
or during a change control. So I'm just going to log into the device. Uh, before I log into the device, I'm going to take a snapshot first. So I'm just going to copy this command here. Uh, actually, before uh, you know, before I uh, run the command, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, the actual JSNAP config file, which basically need to be passed as well as the command, which basically contains the definition of things that we like to take snapshot of or check. Okay. So I'm just going to go vi here. Uh, in this case, you know, every JSNAP configuration we should start with the do section which basically define the test criteria so in this case we're gonna make sure that our carp link check works and then also the active chess is alarm check okay so it's pretty basic so I'm just gonna be disabling an interface uh, on the device and then uh, so right now that device is enabled on the device and I'll show you uh, and then I will disable the interface and then uh, we're gonna be do a post check which basically should detect the change and then I'll compare and I'll show you that how that JSNAP can detect that uh, the changes happened. Okay. Same thing with chassis alarm. So uh, for chassis alarm, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be uh, basically uh, right now chassis alarm is not configured at all. So there is no alarms at this point, just so that I can replicate uh, the scenario. Uh, and then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be uh, enabling chassis alarms uh, on Ethernet link down. And then uh, once I do that, then when I do the post check, it should detect there is an alarm triggered. And then should capture that and then we'll compare and we'll show you that the uh, change happened okay uh, it's pretty simple so uh, in the coupling check here uh, you know I'm basically running a command here show uh, interfaces starts uh, GE009 uh, and that basically is gonna run the command on the on the device uh, um, and then uh, the physical interface is gonna go to the physical interface the node uh, the XML node right and then uh, it's gonna check if there's any difference in there uh, in the operation upper that status uh, item. Okay, I'm gonna run this command in XML, and I can I can show you what exactly I mean. Okay, and then you know uh, it's gonna show you some information that this must be up. And then if it doesn't meet the test here, so if there's a difference, it's gonna show an error here for us that the link is down and and, and to check the uh, physical connection for this interface. Same thing with the uh, chassis alarms, right? So if there is uh, no chassis alarms, and if there are alarms, there will be some message here, like error message that there are some alarms, okay? So uh, let's take a snapshot first. I'm just gonna copy this whole text here. Gonna copy and paste, okay? I'm just gonna take a snapshot, and then I'll log in the device, and I'll show you what the device has. I'm just taking a snapshot, it's pretty simple. Okay, so snapshot has been taken. So I'm just gonna log in the device. I didn't make any change to the device. Okay. Okay, if I do a show interfaces terse GE009. Okay, you see both links uh had been uh, linked up. Okay, I'm gonna show you the uh, XML command format. Stash, I just pipe it display XML that should show me the XML format. So this is what JSNAP is using. It's going to use the physical dash interface. So you need to have some understanding and you can run this XML format command, uh, pipe, uh, pi uh, run a command with XML and should get some understanding of the XML format uh, before uh, uh, writing a JSNAP configuration file. And then you basically are talking about, you know, this physical dash interface. And then we are basically checking this one. Okay, if there's any difference, that means we are catching those, okay, with just that. Uh, show chassis alarms, nothing configured right now. And I didn't configure chassis alarm at all. I just wanna trigger some chassis alarms with configuration and then basically take those through uh, just now. So let's go to the configure mode and then I'm gonna be loading a configuration file, which I will show you uh, the difference. Post.config, okay. I'm going to do a show compare to see what I'm changing. So I'm adding this section here on the configuration to add some chassis alarms trigger. If there's an Ethernet link down, uh, uh, red. Uh, and then the, I'm also disabling this G009 manually, okay? Just kind of scenario, uh, make a scenario where, you know, someone might be unplugging the cable. Instead of that, doing that, I'm just doing a config disable. Up. So I'm just going to commit this command, uh, commit this config. Okay, so if I look at this uh, show interfaces terse GE009, 
I should see it's down, right? So if I do a display XML, it should show up upper OPR dash status down, okay? Same interface and then show chassis alarms. It should trigger a lot of alarms already because I enabled the configuration. Um, so I'm just gonna go exit out and I'm gonna run the post snapshot command, okay? Okay, so it's gonna same device, just gonna run a post config. Okay, so it's gonna take a snapshot again. Now we're done. We took snapshot before the change and after the change. Now we need to compare if what has changed, okay? Uh, so, I'm gonna be doing the same, actually I'm gonna copy that to save some time. This check command. Okay, so here I'm checking the pre and post, okay? both uh, scenarios and then target device, same device, and then same configuration file, definition file, uh, and see what's, what's happened actually. Okay, so looks like we failed both tests. So as you see here, you know, uh, it's gonna check this action and test failed. You know, G009 must be up. The link G009 is down. It's just a message that we configured, uh, you know, and the same thing with the active chassis alarm. You know, no chassis alarms uh, test failed. So there are 11 chassis alarms. It, it, it detected that. So you can also target a specific test only based on a configuration file. Say you are you have a lot of uh, test scenario defined on a JSON configuration file, but you only want to check few of them. Then you can just do uh, a specific check. So in this case, I'm going to be copying this one. That says S and space uh, the test name. And it only checks for that, okay? That's how it is. That's how easy it is. Um, so now let's go back and change the device back, okay? To uh, what we had, okay? To see if we pass the test. Okay, someone fat fingered something, so we're just gonna fix it. So I have a reset. I'm gonna be using this one, that'll be there. Uh, just to make sure. Okay, so as you see, I'm just removing those uh, thing that I just added. I'm just gonna quit. Okay, so show interfaces, stars, GE009 is up. Show chassis alarms, nothing should be there. Exit. I'm gonna take a snapshot again, the same post snapshot. I'm gonna call it post again. Okay. Okay, it's gonna override that, whatever I had before. And I'm gonna run the same check. Okay, so now I pass the checks. I only did one check, so let me go back the whole check. So now I have passed on both tests. So that's the power of JSNAP. I hope this video is helpful for you. Uh, you can use JSNAP to save a lot of time and make sure your network stays safe. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.